Recently, I made a video where I tried to statistically calculate which Pokemon was the strongest. Now, admittedly, there were some problems with my methods, mainly that I didn't clarify enough that the video was intended for comedy purposes and not a genuine tool for competitive play. So, you know what, all you Pokemon math fanatics? I heard you. I heard your cries for more rigorous statistical accuracy, and today, I will be answering them. No jokes, no japes, just pure mathematical precision. Alright, there will probably be some japes. In the last video, I tried to find who was overall the strongest Pokemon, the one who would prevail in almost any situation you threw them in. But, what if you didn't have to worry about different situations? What if you were able to control the precise conditions that a Pokemon was battling in? How strong could it possibly be? In other words, what is the most possible damage you can do in a single attack? Before we can answer this question though, we first need to figure out how exactly damage is calculated in Pokemon. You thought there was a lot of math in the last video? Ha 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 ha! Oh, it gets worse. This is the formula used to calculate damage from Generation 5 onwards. You don't really need to understand all the gritty details for the purpose of this video, and believe me, you don't want to. But let me give you a quick rundown of all these variables so you have some idea of what I'm talking about. What level are you? What's your attack stat? What's the defense of the person you're hitting? The move's base power. How many people are you hitting at once? Is this the second strike of parental bond? Yup, that's got its own variable. One Pokemon has this ability. Uh, what's the weather, Stan? Is it a critical hit? Are you stabbing your opponent? Just kidding, it stands for same type attack bonus, like if you're a fire type using a fire attack. It sounds pretty cool though. It's super effective. Or is it? Ya burnt. Even Bulbapedia couldn't be bothered with this part. Multiply all of this together and you get the raw amount of damage that you deal to your opponent. Most of the stuff at the end here is just bonuses and modifiers for certain conditions, but the real big numbers are going to come from this section. My original plan was to go through the whole Pokedex and plug in a bunch of different Pokemon and moves into the formula and see what I could get. But luckily, Reddit user MXTony already did the math for me. Even though they did make one slight error in their calculations, but we'll get to that later. Link to the original thread in the description down below. It's super interesting. It's super convoluted, but here's what you need to do in order to deal maximum possible damage. It needs to be a triple battle for this combo to work, so it has to be Generation 5 or later. You need a Shuckle that has Shell Smash, Power Trip, Defense Curl, and Mimic with the item Metronome, and your opponent needs to be a Noibat. First, you need to use Power Trip to swap Shuckle's attack and defense stats. You now have the highest base attack stat in the game, but be careful because your defense is worse than Pichu's. Have Shuckle get the maximum attack with Shell Smash and get Noibat to minimum defense. Use Forest Curse to add the Grass typing onto Noibat and use Skill Swap to put Protein onto Shuckle. Shuckle needs to use Defense Curl and then mimic someone who just used Ice Ball to turn your Shuckle into an Ice type and get Ice Ball stacking up. While Ice Ball is building up, use Skill Swap again to put huge power onto Shuckle, then send out two Cherum with the ability Flower Gift and the move Sunny Day and Helping Hand. On the fifth turn of Ice Ball, if both Cherum use Helping Hand, which, by the way, Tony, does stack, and you score a critical hit on Noibat, you'll deal 721,899,321 damage. Whew. It's too bad that a level 1 Noibat has a maximum of 12 hit points. You just killed that Noibat and its next 60 million generations. Oh boy, that took me like 12 takes. Oh my god. Sounds, well, buck wild in theory, but it's even worse in execution. Because, you see, it's all well and good to say, yeah, yeah, just swap around abilities a bunch and have all these moves ready to go. But is it actually possible, no matter how difficult, to pull this off in a real battle? No. Well, well, sort of, yes. It's complicated. In order to figure out if this strategy is actually possible, 
let's run through all the moving pieces you're gonna need and try and build a team around them. The first is Shuckle. Obviously, it's gonna be the one that's dealing all the damage. Your Shuckle needs to have maximum EVs and IVs in its attack and have the brave nature. If you don't know what I'm talking about, meh, don't worry, it doesn't actually make any sense. It needs to have the attacks Shell Smash, Power Trip, Defense Curl, and Mimic. The first two are easy, Shuckle can learn them by level up. Defense Curl you can get as an egg move, again, Pokemon Daycare stuff, very confusing, even I don't understand it. Mimic is tricky, because the only way to get it on Shuckle is via a move tutor in Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green on the Game Boy Advance, so you'll need to breed the Shuckle in those games and then transfer it all the way up. Let that sink in for a second. If you want to pull off this strategy, you need a Shuckle that has traveled across time and space. And then you need to give it the metronome item. The next thing we need for this combo is the move Forest Curse, which adds the grass typing onto someone. This would make Noibat eight times weak to Ice Ball instead of four, which is huge. The only Pokemon in the world that can learn this move is the Trevenant line, so it absolutely needs a slot on the team. You may have heard me mention the move Skill Swap earlier. That's a move that switches your ability with someone else's. For this, we're using Kecleon, since it also has access to the ability Protein, which we're going to need to turn Shuckle into an Ice type. We also need two Cherim for the very end of the combo. So that leaves just two key pieces that we need. Someone with huge power and someone with Ice Ball. Unfortunately, there isn't a single Pokemon in the game that has access to both of these, and we only have one slot left on the team. I suppose I could say that in order for this combo to work, you need your opponent to have someone with huge power on their team, and then you could use like a Sfeel or something for Ice Ball, but that kind of feels like cheating. So, no. As cool as it sounds, there is actually not enough space on your team for you to pull off a combo like this. Unless, there is one Pokemon that can gain access to both of these moves, but, but no, no, it's crazy. Just crazy enough to work. The last Pokemon you'll need on your team is a Metacham. It has the ability Pure Power, which is, well, exactly the same as Huge Power. I have no idea why they're two separate abilities. They both double the strength of your physical attacks. Metacham doesn't learn Ice Ball at all, but it does learn the move Metronome. When you use it, the game randomly selects an attack out of every possible move in the game, and then you use it. This is literally the only way to get Ice Ball on a Pokemon with pure power or huge power. There is a very, very, very slim chance that you'll actually get it when you need it. But there is still a chance. And there it is, the Avengers of Pokemon. A team capable of dealing enough damage to kill God. Assuming God is a level 1 Noibat. So now we're ready to simulate this battle and see exactly what steps you need to take in order to deal the maximum possible amount of damage. Wrong, stupid! Before we need to solve a complex math problem like this, we first need to outline our assumptions. You know, that one part of the problem that every science and engineering professor expects you to do and yet no student since the dawn of time has ever remembered. There's a very, very small demographic of people who actually understood that joke, but y'all are the real ones. I'm going to assume that your opponent's team has a Noibat and a bunch of other useless Pokemon that aren't going to break your combo at all. I'm also going to assume that your Pokemon isn't actively working with you to get this combo off, but they also won't do anything to directly mess with it, which is, you know, basically anything. It's a triple battle, meaning every trainer has three Pokemon out at a time. This means that your position on the field matters, since you can only hit Pokemon directly adjacent to you. I'm going to be going through turn by turn explaining exactly what you need to do in the exact order that you need to do it. This will be on the final exam, so take notes, because it gets crazy real fast. Also, keep track of this little number in the bottom corner. That represents the percent chance that you have of succeeding each turn, since even one missed attack or something can ruin your whole day. But 
Well, we'll get more on that later. All right, time to battle. Start with your Shuckle on the left, Kecleon in the middle, and one of the Cherims, let's call it Billy, on the right. Let's say your opponent has two Magikarps, we'll call them Thing 1 and Thing B since they're not important, and then the fabled Noibat in the middle. We'll call him Richard. Cherim is the fastest, so start off by using Sweet Set. This lowers the evasion of Noibat and Thing B. Assuming I understand the Pokemon accuracy formula from Bulbapedia correctly, which I probably don't, this should give Screech from Kecleon effectively 113% accuracy, meaning it can't miss. Kecleon will use Screech to lower Noibat's defense two stages out of six possible stages for those not familiar. Lastly, Shuckle needs to use Power Trip to swap its attack and defense stat, giving it a base 230 attack stat, which is the highest in the game. Recall your Cherim and send out Trevenant. Have Kecleon use Screech again, and have Shuckle use Shell Smash. This will raise Shuckle's attack and speed two stages, but also lower its defenses. Yeah, but we already power trip, so our defenses are through the floor anyway, so you're in Arceus's hands now. Have Trevenant use Forest Curse on Noibat to add the grass typing to it. Kecleon will use Screech one last time, making Noibat's defenses as low as the game will allow. Have Shuckle use Shell Smash once again, if you're having trouble following the combo so far, I'd like to apologize for the next seven turns in advance. After using its one move, Trevenant only has one more important role for this combo. Be in the bench warmer. <laughs> Way to go, man. Don't strain yourself too hard. Chump. Swap out Trevenant for Metacham instead. Then have Kecleon use Skill Swap on Shuckle, giving Shuckle Protein and Kecleon Sturdy. Then have Shuckle Shell Smash one last time making it at maximum attack. For those worried that Shuckle might outspeed Kecleon from here on out after all the speed boosts, and to cross between a slug, a turtle, and a rock. Multiplying anything by zero is still zero. Metacham doesn't need to use any attacks this turn, so it can just do whatever you want. I guess you could try Metronome here to see if you can get lucky and get Ice Ball early, but there's a real chance you could accidentally kill the Noibat with something, so proceed at your own risk. Kecleon should use Skill Swap once again to take pure power from Metacham and give it Shuckle Sturdy instead. Following along so far? <laughs> well, it's about to get worse. Oh boy. First, use Kecleon's turn to swap places with Shuckle, putting Shuckle in the middle. Next, have Metacham use Metronome and say your prayers that you get the move Ice Ball. On the very, very off chance that you do, you don't get to pick who Ice Ball targets, so pray it ain't Noibat or else it dies and you end the combo early. Shuckle should go next and it can use Mimic to learn Ice Ball for the rest of the game. The way Ice Ball works is once you use it, you're locked into it and every turn you use it, it doubles in damage up to five times. It usually starts at base 30 power, but for some reason, if you use Defense Curl right before using Ice Ball, it starts at 60 meaning that by the end, it's at a base 960 power. This is also the reason why we gave Shuckle a metronome, the, the item, not the move. Oh, f The way the metronome item works is that every time you use a move consecutively, it gets 10% stronger, up to a maximum of 100%. That means that if Shuckle uses Ice Ball for 10 turns in a row, then on the last hit, it will have an effective base power of 1,920 before stab or anything like that. That is likely enough to kill any Pokemon in the game, but I want to kill a god. Afraid? You should be. But you're in too deep now, and we've still got a long way to go, baby! Swap out Metacham for Billy the Cherim again. Kecleon doesn't have anything to do this turn, so it can just take it easy. All right, you want to just, just read this? Uh, all right, my assistant Richard was editing the video. He informed me there's one more line I need to record for it. I just, just read it. All right. Incorrect, you dumb b All right, so apparently I have made a slight mistake. I said at this point you need to swap out Metacham, but 
it is currently locked into using Ice Ball, meaning you cannot. But don't worry, the combo will not be broken so easily. I am a smarter man than that. You see, Kecleon, thankfully, didn't have anything to do this turn, but sorry buddy, we're putting you back to work. Now, ordinarily, because Kecleon is all the way on the left and Metacham is all the way on the right, Kecleon could not touch it at all. But there are a few moves that can reach all the way across, one of which is the move Water Pulse, which Kecleon can learn via TM. So if your Kecleon has a Water Pulse, and we haven't used all its move slots or anything, so you can teach it this, and it is a high enough level that it would one-shot Metacham, you can Water Pulse your own Pokemon to kill it and allow you to send in something else in its place. See? I can fix it. I can fix anything. Who's the dumb now, Richard? Shuckle should use the move Defense Curl. Cherim doesn't have much to do until the very end, so just start spamming Sweet Send in case our opponents get any ideas and use move to raise its evasion. Look, this combo is super easy to break, so I'll help our chances wherever I can. Have Shuckle finally use Ice Ball. Because it has Protein, it will now turn into an Ice type and gain the Stab bonus. Pray the Ice Ball doesn't hit the Noibat because it will definitely kill it at this point, but we want to kill it better. But also pray that it doesn't target Thing 1 and then miss because that one hasn't had its evasion lowered yet and Ice Ball only has 90% accuracy. Kecleon can now safely use Skill Swap again to transfer Pure Power onto Shuckle and end its insane game of Ability Hot Potato. We've got almost everything we need set up now, so now you can safely switch Kecleon out for the second Cherim, let's call it Bobby. Shuckle just needs to keep on building up its metronome, so we need to stall for time. So through turn 14, have Billy and Bobby spam Sweet Zen while Shuckle uses Ice Ball. If at literally any point in this combo, Ice Ball decides to target Noibat, it's game over. Shuckle is super powerful at this point, so it will literally one-shot any of your opponent's Pokemon. So, hope they got a bag full of revives. Oh yeah, did I mention revives were need to be allowed in order for this to work? Sorry, competitive scene. Unless, of course, they also have a Kecleon that can somehow skill swap the ability Sturdy onto a Shedinja that has also been hit with Forest Curse, meaning that Ice Ball can target it all the live long day without ever taking it out, which, you know, is plausible, I guess. Look, I work with what I got. Billy or Bobby, your choice, needs to use Sunny Day. This will activate both Cherim's Flower Gift ability, which grants Kecleon a 1.5 times bonus to its attack each for a total of 2.25 bonus as long as Sunny Day is active. This is it, the final turn, the moment we've all been waiting for. First, both Cherim need to use Helping Hand on Shuckle, which functions exactly the same as the Flower Gift ability. This is the fifth hit on the Ice Ball, and the Metronome has now built up to 100%. So, assuming Shuckle now decides to hit the Noibat and scores a critical hit, Congratulations, you just dealt 721,899,321 points of damage in a single attack. <sighs> but remember those little percentages I mentioned earlier? We just proved that it is indeed possible to pull this combo off, but how likely is it? Assuming your opponent never does one of the many, many, many things they could easily do to break this combo, but isn't actively working with you either. What are the odds of this combo succeeding all the way to the end? Well, it ain't one in a million. It's one in two million, 296,545. Admittedly, yes, that's largely because we're relying on Metronome to get us Ice Ball, which is already a one in 555 chance in Generation 5. If you did assume that one of your opponent's Pokemon had huge power or pure power that you could just steal and then you could just have a Pokemon with Ice Ball instead, the odds increase to one in just over 4,000, which is better? And there you have it, a step-by-step -step guide on how you can be the most extra you can possibly be in Pokemon. I don't recommend that anybody try this. Even the easier version where you have a friend on the other side to help you would take thousands of tries. Again, this is 
purely hypothetical. Please do not attempt this. One cannot deal enough damage to kill a god without losing their sanity along the way. But uh, if you don't want to try it, maybe tweet it at me on Twitter, at the chip died. That sounds pretty fun. But I guess the true lesson at the end of the day is that I was right. Shuckle is one of the top 10 best Pokemon in the game. In fact, under the right conditions, the insanely specific conditions, there is literally none better. Vindication! You think that's enough to kill a god? <laughs>